the investigation in her three month ordeal ensues. 88 days ago, we stood before you speaking about the unthinkable tragedy and asked you to help us find 13 year old Jamie Kloss. For 88 days, you called in tips, brought us food, searched arm in arm with us, wrote us notes and never gave up hope. As the days and weeks wore on, you still continued to call. Law enforcement locally and across the country continued to comb through over 3,500 tips and the family never gave up hope. Last night, our collective promise was fulfilled with Jamie's safe recovery. Thank you to all. Joining me today, FBI Special Agent Justin Talameo, Josh Call, Wisconsin Attorney General, Brian O'Keefe from the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigation, Barron County District Attorney DA, or DA Brian Wright, Douglas County Sheriff Tom Dahlbeck, Captain Nick Wanick from the Wisconsin State Patrol, and Diane Trembley, Superintendent of the Barron School District. Jamie is faith, safe and the family is requesting that you please respect their privacy at this extremely emotional time. Also in a few minutes you'll hear from Superintendent Diane Trembley on a message from the school and please respect the respect of no media on school property today, please. This case remains a team effort from the beginning and I'll never be able to thank all the agencies and businesses, individuals that helped on this case with their singular focus to bring Jamie home. Yesterday, there was a lot of confusion with an erroneous social media post about 4.30 p.m. in Walworth County. This was an incident in Walworth County, but in no way had connection to this case as reported on Facebook. Shortly after I posted that Jamie was not involved in the Walworth County incident, um, my detectives were alerted. Uh, a 911 call was out, being given out in Douglas County. Um, responding to a person claiming they had found Jamie. I'm now gonna bring up Sheriff Tom Dahlbeck, the Douglas County Sheriff, and he'll address this part of the, uh, the incident. Sheriff. Thanks, Chris. My uh, agency received a 911 call about uh, 4.30 yesterday afternoon from mm -hmm. the individual who was out walking her dog. Um, said she was approached by a young female claiming to be Jamie Kloss. Uh, this lady immediately went to a nearby house, notified uh, that neighbor of the uh, claim, and this neighbor called 911, and my deputies uh, responded uh, en masse immediately and identified Jamie as the uh, person that uh, approached the neighbor, took uh, control of her and possession of her, and put her in uh, safekeeping, and a short time later, one of my patrol sergeants uh, happened to find a vehicle that matched the description that Jamie gave my deputies of the suspect and pulled the vehicle over and uh, took the suspect in custody at that time. Um, beyond that, uh, Jamie was taken to a local hospital up in the Duluth Superior area where she was uh, looked over and examined and she was held overnight for observation. And uh, the suspect was interviewed and subsequently brought back down here to Barron County. Uh, that's all I have right now. Thank you, Sheriff Dahlbeck, and thank you, deputies, for the work that they helped in this case. The suspect arrested, it was arrested, and is currently being held in the Barron County Jail. That suspect is Jake Thomas Patterson, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N. He is 21 years old from Gordon, Wisconsin. He is currently being held on two counts of first degree intentional homicide for the murder of Jamie's parents and one count of kidnapping. Barron County District Attorney Brian White will give a brief comment next. Thank you, for, <clears throat> thank you Sheriff Fitzgerald. First of all, I wanna thank everyone with law enforcement for the tremendous work that they did to bring Jamie home. That starts with Sheriff Fitzgerald and the Barron County Sheriff's Department it includes the FBI, the Division of Criminal Investigation, and the hundreds of officers who came to Barron County to assist in this investigation. I saw firsthand how brave, <clears throat> determined, and dedicated these men and women are. It has truly been an honor to see the work that they have performed as public servants to this community. It was only a few months ago that we as a community gathered to pray for Jamie's safe return. 
at Barron High School. God has answered those prayers. The case will now be referred to the district attorney's office. Our office will review the reports and then make a charging decision. It is my intent to have a criminal complaint filed by next week. It is our job in prosecuting this case to obtain justice for James, Denise, and Jamie Kloss. We will do so. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you DA Wright. This case remains very active and fluid as we stand before you today. We have FBI, DCI, State Patrol, Douglas County investigators, and Barron County detectives actively working the scene and conducting interviews. So details will be sp sparse right now. We do plan a 4 p.m. media update with more t details to be released at that time right here. As you heard, the charges of the suspect, uh, the suspect is being charged with kidnapping. Jamie was taken against her will and escaped from a residence at which she was being held and found help. We also do not believe that this time that the suspect had any contact with the family. We do believe Jamie was the only target. I can tell you that the subject planned his actions and took many proactive steps to hide his identity from law enforcement and the general public. Next, I want to invite some of our partners to, take a few com to make a few comments. Again, these agencies stepped forward, coming here, never gave up hope, and became part of our community. I can never thank them enough. Uh, first, I'll bring up Special Agent in charge of the FBI, Justin Talameo. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, again, I am Justin Talameo. I'm the FBI Special Agent in charge of the Milwaukee Division, which covers all of Wisconsin. We are so pleased to stand here today with our fellow law enforcement partners to celebrate Jamie's recovery. It is an incredible day. As the sheriff said, this case was challenging given the proactive steps the subject took to avoid detection. In, this ca in cases like this, we often need a big break, and it was Jamie herself who gave us that break. We'd like to thank the citizens who came forward quickly to help save Jamie, and the fast action of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office to bring her home safely. I also want to recognize the tireless efforts of agents, deputies, officers, and staff who spent the past three months never giving up on Jamie. This is all the outcome we like to have when a child goes missing. This is all we want to see, and it happened in this case. Thanks again to Jamie's family and the entire community of Barron for never giving up on Jamie. Today, we can finally say, Jamie Kloss is home. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I want to bring up Wisconsin Attorney General, Josh Call. Uh, thank you, Sheriff. Um, first, let me thank Sheriff Fitzgerald for his incredible leadership throughout this process. Um, Sheriff, people across Wisconsin, and I suspect across this country, are overjoyed that Jamie is finally safe. This was an effort that involved numerous law enforcement agencies, more than I have time to name. Uh, and I want to thank everybody who participated in this investigation. Uh, I want to thank everybody in the community who volunteered, uh, who played a role, who supported this investigation, and who supported law enforcement. I want to say that I am incredibly proud of the work that uh, the Department of Justice played in assisting uh, with this investigation. Uh, the Department of Justice will continue to assist as needed uh, with the investigation and with the prosecution of this case. So thank you again. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll bring up uh, Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigation Administrator Brian O'Keefe. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, <clears throat> good morning. It, a lot of thank yous today uh, for everybody. And I, and I uh, want to say, uh, first, thank you to the media also for helping out. Uh, you guys have been... Uh, I'm present here, but you have also been a great resource to law enforcement getting the message out regarding Jamie. So that, that's incredible. Thank you to you. Uh, also want to say thank you to all of our agents, uh, the deputies. Uh, we've talked about it. This case had so many technical aspects uh, that were very challenging for law enforcement. And everybody never blinked about putting aside their personal lives uh, to bring a little girl home. And. Uh, the work that got done uh, is, uh, 
that really, I, I don't think I've seen this much work done on any one case I've been involved in in my entire career. And the friendships and the professionalism of all agencies at the local, state, and federal level uh, have just been um, beyond what anybody could really expect. Uh, the FBI brought in resources from all over the country. Uh, DOJ had our resources. Uh, we're here on ground today trying to uh, help the community recover. Our victim witness people are up here along with uh, those from uh, the local and federal level. Um, there's a lot of people uh, that are very emotional about uh, the recovery of Jamie. It's a happy thing. Uh, but now we have to work on the recovery process and, and we've reached out to a lot of professionals uh, to help uh, this young lady and her family uh, as they're reunited and uh, she goes through a new healing process. So we uh, ask that you just please respect the family today as we try to get this uh, work through. Uh, there'll be time for uh, questions and interviews on that later. But thank you again for everything. Thank you, Brian. Lastly, I want to bring up Baron Superintendent Diane Tremley to talk about the school plans. Hello, my name is Diane Tremblay and I have the honor to serve as superintendent of the Barron Area School District in Barron County. What a glorious day. This will certainly never be forgotten. There's so much love and hugs in our district today. It's just insurmountable. Jamie has been found safe and has been reunited with her family and friends. There is truly nothing in the world better than that. Now I would like to take time to address a few of the common questions that have come our way last night and this morning from all of you. What has it been like in the Barron Area School District in the past months? It has been 88 days of hope for her safe return, 88 days of prayers for Jamie, her family, friends, our students, staff, and community. 88 days of holding on to the faith that our authorities would never give up, and they certainly did not. Finally, 88 days of our close-knit community with the same goal in mind, and that was to bring Jamie home and back into our arms. I would like to thank everyone for your overflow of support that continues to come to us from local, state, federal agencies, businesses, families, along with the incredible small town connection that we have. We are truly a beautiful family. Most importantly, we want to thank Jamie for being so courageous and for achieving an opportunity to find her way back to us. What an extraordinary young lady. What is the support like in our district was another question that was quite common. The support for our Barron Area School District has been nothing less than exceptional. The teamwork from our administration, our SRO, supervisors, counselors, school psychologists, and faith partners from our district, as well as other neighboring districts, has and continues to successfully address the distinguished needs of our students, teachers, bus drivers, support staff, as well as our entire community. The Department of Justice School Safety Team was the second call I received last evening. It came to me minutes after I received that miraculous call from Sheriff Fitzgerald, who was immediately assessing our needs in the district after he gave me this news. The DOJ Office of School Safety has partnered with us to ensure that our students, staff, and the larger school community receive the support that we need to feel safe during this investigation. The Office of School Safety has provided on-site support to Barron School District in the form of school psychologists trained in crisis response, therapy dogs from the Wausau Police Department, additional school resource officers, and emergency management guidance. The Office of School Safety has also contacted their partner, Safe and Sound Schools, to help us deliver training and provide support to our school community regarding crisis response, trauma, as well as recovery. In addition to the DOJ Office of School Safety, we are also grateful to the Wasap Police Department, Eau Claire Police Department, National Association of School Psychologists, and Safe and Sound Schools. One last question that's been asked that I would like to address. Will our district be holding a celebration or ceremony in the community of any sort? 
All I can say to that at this time is you better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. Jamie, we missed you, and we are so grateful you are home. Thank you. <clears throat> Before I take questions, and we'll have to <clears throat> really, with all of you, we'll, to, we'll get to them, don't worry. I have some thank yous. Again, my thank yous will never be enough. Thank you to Jamie for having the will to survive. Jamie's family for their patience and keeping their faith in us. The people who rescued Jamie yesterday. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office and all their work yesterday. All the law enforcement agencies locally and across the nation that helped us with the tips. The general public for their support of Jamie. From Jamie Facebook groups to businesses that fed us to the posters that went up on semi-trailers around town, everywhere that you guys put posters up. The school, superintendent, teachers, and all the students for their notes and the beautiful tree lighting. The FBI, DCI, State Patrol, and all the other agencies that assisted us. To the members of my team, my command staff, the dispatchers that took all the tips, patrol officers for following up on all the tips, and our detectives as they continue the work in the field today. <clears throat> Lastly, my family for all their support and understanding over the past three months. This has been an awesome day. And I can't thank you guys, the media, enough either. I got lots of tips, or a text last night, tips of support. Not looking for information, just saying our newsroom is crying with you. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, it's been a tremendous day. We'll, we'll be posting pictures and handing out pictures very shortly of the suspect. We also will email this out. This is the suspect in, currently in the Barron County Jail. Our PIOs from the FBI will be passing these out, and we will also email that to our press and put it on our Facebook page. So with that, many of us are here, are available to answer questions. Again, let's try to do it in somewhat. Sheriff, yes. you or the other sheriff talked to us about Jamie's demeanor or condition in those moments when she found that neighbor. What does she look like? Uh, what does she sound like? And how is she right now? description about her. I can talk about now. Um, she is good. She's been cleared from the hospital, as uh, Sheriff Dahlbeck said. There is a reunification process in place going on right now that includes medical, mental evaluations, questioning by uh, detectives and FBI and DCI agents, and then reunification with family. Um, that take place, Chris? Um, we're working on that process is in place right now. Part of that is in place. We hope to have her back here in Barron County um, this morning or early afternoon. Sheriff, you know you've right talked about, about what happened to her in the last three months. Do you know that yet? Or we we do not that? know that. This group behind me does not have that information. Uh, we are. This is a very active and fluid case. We are serving search warrants right at this moment uh, in Gordon, uh, in other areas for vehicles, um, uh, looking for evidence. And um, again, that we hope to release a lot more of that information at four o'clock. Sheriff, you said that Sheriff, you said Sheriff, Sheriff, you said that Jamie was the target, yep. not her parents. So, that, what interaction, what contact did the suspect have with Jamie beforehand? That's what we're trying to figure out now. But we believe it was very. Um, we believe there was really none, no contact. Do you know if they knew each other prior to this? We, I don't know that. We're waiting for that. Again, uh, we think at 4 o'clock we'll be able to release more information about that. Did Jake Patterson have any connection to law enforcement or any criminal history prior to this? Jake Patterson had zero criminal history locally and zero criminal history in the state of Wisconsin. Sheriff, you've been working for eight... We are not looking for any additional suspects. Was Gordon on your radar before this? Was Gordon on our radar? Gordon was not on our radar. Did they have any... First court, first court appearance? We don't have that yet. That'll be set after we file our criminal complaint. So Sometime next week, though. Yes. We believe it'll be next week someday, or a day next week. Can Jamie explain how she was able to get away yesterday? Um, she is currently doing that with our detectives now. I do not have that. I just know that she did escape from the home and did find help. On that note, Sheriff, Sheriff you've been working tirelessly <clears throat> for 88 days to see her escape by herself. What is that like for you? Uh, that is the will of a kid to survive. It's the unthinkable. I mean, it's just, uh, you guys know, understand the fake news that's out there, and you guys get bombarded with it. And we just had it 
prior to this. I mean, I wasn't done with the first tip about she's not in Walworth County and she's in Douglas County. How can that be? I mean, my head spins, as you guys have seen for the last 88 days. Sure. Um, it's amazing the will of that 13-year-old girl to survive and escape. Um, and I, that comes from the hope and the prayers and this community and what everybody did. I think what's very uh, interesting is she was recognized immediately by both the female walking the dog and the people at the house because of the work that we did, the public did, and the media did. I think that can't go un, untalked about here. I mean, that was remarkable that people recognized her. Just what we wanted to happen, happened. Chair, a couple of months ago, you had <clears throat> a, a release of a couple of car descriptions. Were those cars, did they end up being tied to this case at all? And my other question is, how did she flee the scene? Was it by car, by foot? Is there any indication? She, she left by foot the scene, and the suspect has several vehicles. We're currently evaluating those vehicles. Sure. Yes. How did, how did she become a target of this alleged suspect? Um, we were just briefed on that by our detectives. That's what they're trying to figure out right now with both interviews of the, of the person we've arrested, Mr. Patterson, and the interviews with Jamie. Does he have any ties to Barron? Does he have any ties here in Barron? Um, he does have a tie to Barron County. Sheriff, sure. you said that Jamie was held in the hospital overnight. Are there any signs of physical abuse? Oh, I do not know the answer to that. All I know is she's medically cleared at this time, so she's available to our detectives to start the, re the second part of the reunification process, which is the interview that they are conducting at this time so that we can bring her home. Sheriff, what steps did the suspect take to not get caught? <clears throat> uh, we can't comment on that yet because one, we haven't been briefed on that. We just know that he has taken some measures to avoid detection from both law enforcement and the public. Was he in one area the whole time with Jamie? We don't know that. It appears that way, but we don't know. We can't confirm that completely yet. Sure. The, the incident, there was a 911 call made from the home. Do we know who made that 911 call? At this time, I haven't been told who made that 911 call. Sure. 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 It's a very emotional day, obviously. I see the team behind you. <clears throat> Describe the emotion when you found out she was found. Go through that, because I can see it on everyone's <laughs> face back there. But give it to me if you don't mind. I mean, it was first unreal, and is it true? And then when we confirm with Sheriff Dahlbeck's team that it's confirmed it was her, uh, you know, my legs started to shake, man. It was, it was awesome. It was just distress and relief. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. I don't, I don't have a different word. I mean, it's just fabulous. It was just great. I don't know. I mean, my wife and kids are here, so I have to be careful. <laughs> but um, it was pretty. It ranks right up there. I'll tell you that. Um, and it was. It was awesome to call Diane, uh, to tell the DA, um, to talk to these guys that have been, they're just not cops. They're part of this community. When uh, Special Agent in Charge Justin Tolomeo said, we're a part of this community. When Brian O'Keefe's guys come up and they've been part of this community, they've been part of it for 88 days. They didn't come here Monday until noon and come back on Friday. They worked every single day of the week on this case. Um, it was. It was tremendous effort by these people behind me. This isn't, this is a team. Um, and you guys are part of it, so thank you. Sure. Was there anyone else in Patterson's <clears throat> home in Gordon when you guys went there yesterday? There was no one else in the home. And where was he arrested? Where he was arrested, I'm gonna let Sheriff Dahlbeck answer that because I, I don't know. Question. Uh, where was he actually, where'd you pull him over? Where did Mr. Patterson get arrested? He was uh, just down the road from the residence. Did he surrender peacefully? Yes. Was he looking for her? Uh, no, I don't believe so. At this point, has he confessed to anything? Uh, I'll leave that He's to being interviewed. Sheriff. I don't know the answer to that. Did Jamie identify the suspect, uh, either from the hospital room or from wherever? Did she identify the suspect that you guys have? I, I don't know the answer to that question either. Do you know Sheriff, where she is does yeah. Harrison own the house? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Did he, does he own the house? And I don't know the answer to that. Do you know if Jamie was inside the home when her parents were killed? Uh, Jamie was inside the home when her parents were killed. Do you know how she was kept in that house against her will? She locked up. Don't know that answer. <clears throat> That's what the search warrant is for right now. As we speak, it's being served. Sheriff, who was your first phone call to? Um, good question. Uh, my chief deputy, because <laughs> I had to remember. Um, the family's reaction, um, we were able to coordinate efforts on that because we had a reunification plan in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
and we were able to do the family in Lady Smith. Some of that family was at a basketball game here in Barron, and we sent three teams out, and I got to tell Jennifer Smith. We had the Russ County Sheriff and a detective tell um, the family in Lady Smith, and then my chief deputy did the family that was at the basketball game here, <clears throat> and um, it was they were broke down. I mean, it was because um, they had heard about the fake news, so we were they thought we were coming to confirm that it wasn't her. Don't worry, um, but when we said she was found safe and alive. Um, Tears and lots of hugs. Sheriff, why do you think she was a target? Um, based on some limited information I have, I, I believe she was the target. From but, her? Um, from our detectives. I don't know how they got that information. Did they have any contact on social media? It doesn't appear to be. Sheriff, can you talk about what immediately preceded the abduction? Um, expand on that. Like, we, what did the suspect do? Plan his actions, she's the target, so I'm just curious. Uh, but you said you didn't think that they had any contact beforehand. Right. So I don't know what he did right afterwards. His immediate, what he did with Jamie immediately after, I don't know where they went. I don't know if there's a secondary location. That's, again, what our detectives... Have you recovered a weapon? The induction? Have we recovered a weapon? I don't know that at this time. Sheriff, why did you never lose hope that she was alive? She's a 13-year-old girl, and I'm the sheriff of this county, and my job is to make sure everybody's safe, as these guys all take the same oath, and there was no use. There's no reason to give up hope. We didn't have any evidence to show that she was injured or that she was hurt at the scene. Um, there was no reason to give up hope. Um, that tree lighting ceremony at the school, those kids believed, and when kids believe, it's easy for adults to believe. Sure. 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 Does it appear that Patterson had any mental health issues? I have no idea on that question. Sure, tell us more about where she was being held in this, this area, the type of home that's in. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a home in a remote area. That's all I know outside of Gordon, Wisconsin. Has okay. she been there the entire time? or We don't know that answer. Sheriff, sure, how long was he planning this out? You know, he said it was preemptive. How, you don't know, have the timeline of how long he planned this? I don't have an answer of how long. How did the suspects <laughs> know Jamie in the first place? I do not know that answer. Our detectives are figuring that out as we speak. And just to make sure I understood you correctly <clears throat> earlier, he didn't know her parents at all. We don't believe that there was contact there. When, there you, when you say contact, does that mean physical contact or, or that he, he any, had any relationship, any, never had met them? It doesn't appear to be. So you believe he went there with the intention of abducting her and did whatever he had to do to do so? It, it appears that way. Did that 911 call pick up any audio that would glean any information? No, in that, Two more, two more questions, he said. Sure, there are thousands of tips, but no leads. Why do you think this investigation was so difficult? I think because of the steps he took, what we've been briefed on, again, I can't comment until we confirm a lot of that thing, because I don't want to tell you something and have to change my story. Um, but I, I, it's a remote area. There isn't a lot of houses in that area. Um, you know, he not only concealed his identity from us, he concealed. It appears he concealed her from other people also, his How friends. Did he know and she existed before all this? I don't know the answer to that. Well, that's the question I want to answer. Was Patterson employed and what did he do? Uh, he was not employed at this current time. And how far did he have to, she have to walk from where she was held to? You know, where the sheriff, how far where she had to walk? No, I don't, I don't know that. We don't have that answer. Any so, connection to Shadi to Jenny Owen. No, it doesn't appear to be any connection to Jenny Owen. She's a brave little girl, but can you tell us anything about what the last three months have been like for her? Is, is there fear in her eyes? <clears throat> I have not seen, seen her, strong. talked to her, and again, that process is taking part. We'll be back at 4 o'clock. Thank you guys all again. Appreciate it. All right, you've been listening to a press conference there given uh, by authorities in Barron, Wisconsin. You could hear our Adriana Diaz, who is there on the scene, uh, asking questions of the sheriff there. Here's the information uh, that you can see across your screen right now. The police say the suspect is Jake Thomas Patterson. He's 21 years old. Uh, the police do not believe at this point that he had any kind of contact with Jamie Kloss's parents. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And you could hear Adriana pressing the sheriff for more information with regards to that. Uh, he is being served. Uh, well, he's in custody, but they are uh, now using search warrants to check his vehicle, his place of residence. Uh, he was captured uh, or apprehended, we should say, on a road. He, he was asked, the sheriff was, if uh, this suspect, Jake Thomas Patterson, was looking for Jamie when he was captured. Uh, 
apparently not, uh, but they're still digging into that. And I guess the really most, I think, important question is, why was this family targeted? And right now, those are the answers that we do not have. But according to the police, there was no contact with Jamie Kloss's parents. Uh, he did, the sheriff say, that uh, Mr. Patterson uh, was actively attempting to evade capture, uh, and he even altered the appearance of Jamie Kloss um, in an attempt to do so. So Adriana Diaz is there on the ground. She filed this report earlier. Take a listen. This is Jamie Clawson. Call 911. Those were the first words Peter Kaczynskis heard when he opened his front door Thursday. In a phone call, he told us his neighbor had been pounding on it, standing with a disheveled girl. Like, literally like I was seeing a ghost because we've seen the billboards and the commercials and all that stuff. And there she is in my kitchen, you know. Kaczynska says his neighbor was walking her dog around 4 p.m. in this remote and wooded area when Kloss appeared. She immediately brought her to Kaczynska's home to call 911. She saw this girl on the road screaming, help me, help me. He said Kloss appeared thin and ragged, wearing what looked like leggings, a sweatshirt, and oversized men's tennis shoes. He said she was quiet while they waited for police to arrive roughly 15 minutes later. She looked this, uh, like the same as in all the photos, a little thinner. Her hair was still the same color and length. Um, she just looked a little unkept, like she hadn't been able to, you know, take care of herself for, for some time. According to the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, 11 minutes after police arrived, a suspect was taken into custody elsewhere. I just cannot believe this. Kloss's aunt, Sue Allard, was overcome that the teen was found alive. It had been three months since her parents were murdered and she vanished without a trace. James and Denise Kloss were found shot to death in their barren home on October 15th. Police received a mostly inaudible 911 call from Denise Kloss's cell phone around 1 a.m. When authorities arrived just four minutes later, the front door was kicked in, the parents were dead, and Jamie was gone. For months, police and volunteers combed the area for clues. But the tight-knit community kept the faith. Over the holidays, they held a Christmas tree vigil for Kloss. Her family never gave up hope, despite few promising leads. Jamie, we need you here with us to fill that hole we have in our hearts. We all love you to the moon and back, and we will never stop looking for you. And obviously, as I said, Adriana Diaz is there on the ground. We'll check in with her throughout the course of the day and, of course, later tonight on the CBS Evening News. Um, there is some news that we want to share with you out of Washington. Uh, the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence, uh, is meeting with Border Patrol agents in Washington, D.C. Uh, we can ha perhaps expect that uh, he will make some remarks. Of course, when he does that, we'll bring it to you live. For now, quick break. We'll be right back.
800,000 federal workers will not receive their paychecks today as the partial government shutdown ties the record for the longest in U.S. history. This is a live look at the Senate floor where the legislative day is underway. Senators are expected to continue yesterday's debate on strengthening America's security in the Middle East. There's currently no scheduled meetings between the Senate and President Trump yes, we work out an end to this shutdown. Meanwhile, in cities across the country, federal workers are holding protests demanding an end to the political stalemate. All this as the White House is laying the groundwork for the president to declare a national emergency that could end the impasse, but would most likely lead to a battle in the courts. Paula Reed has more. If we don't have a barrier, if we don't have a steel or concrete barrier, we're all wasting a lot of time. As hundreds of thousands of federal workers prepare to miss their first paycheck today, President Trump is at war over his wall. Everybody wants us to win this battle. It's common sense. Death is pouring through. Deliberately surrounded by helicopters and contraband seized by border agents, the president continued to portray the nation as under siege by gangs, drugs, and human traffickers. They need a barrier. They need a wall. But federal workers need to put food on the table. We need our paychecks. Across the country, increasingly desperate federal workers stage protests against the shutdown. Hey, hey, oh, oh. The shutdown has got to go. Even the president's most ardent supporters see no end in sight for the standoff. I have never been more depressed about moving forward than right now. I just don't see a pathway forward. A key issue for Republicans, the president's mixed messages on who pays for the wall. He told this to John Dickerson three months after taking office. Yesterday, the president took a different approach. Obviously, they're not going to write a check, but they are paying for the wall indirectly many, many times over by the, the really great trade deal we just made. If Democrats won't give him taxpayer money for the wall, the president says he will exercise his power to declare a national emergency. I would say it would be uh, very surprising to me that I would not declare a national emergency. Mexico is facing major fuel shortages as the country's new president tackles oil theft. Gas stations across the country are running out of fuel, and some public transportation has been halted. This comes as Mexico's president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, cracks down on cartels and gangs stealing oil from pipelines. It is just one of the many challenges facing the new leader. For more on this, let's bring in CBSN contributor Willis Sparks. He writes for Signal. That's a newsletter produced by G Zero Media. Good to see you, Willis. Good to see you. So in today's newsletter, you highlight three rookie mistakes. Yeah. That President Obrador has already made. Uh, the gas shortage crisis is one of them. What are some of the others? Well, the gas shortage thing is interesting just because it, it's an attempt to solve a real problem. But they apparently just shut the gasoline out of the pipeline without knowing that they didn't have enough gasoline in reserve to avoid a shortage that may go on for weeks. So it's a huge unforced error by a guy who mm. promised a radical transformation of the country. Um, the other, a couple of other mistakes. He also, uh, the, the party has proposed a bill that would limit salaries and benefits for public sector workers to the reduced salary and benefits of the president. So in other words, it's a big salary and benefit cut for a lot of people who work for the government. This is a president who has a very government-centric approach to all kinds of problem solving, and we're 